Now, let's point to a forgery made in the translation of a Bible text in which Greece is artificially and strongly favored. It's about the Old Testament book of Daniel. This book was written at the end of the 7th or early 6th century BC. Verse 821 mentions a powerful king who will appear in the future. Many today assume that the prophet Daniel was referring to Alexander the Great, who appeared some 300 years after the book of Daniel was written. In many translations of this verse, this king is called the King of Greece. For example, the word Greece is mentioned in the English translation of Webster from 1833, then in Darby's translation from 1890, and in the 1901 American Standard Version of the Bible and others. In all these English translations, the term Greece is found. In a famous translation of the Bible by the Anglican Church known as the King James Bible of 1611, this term was modified and instead of Greece it is written Grecia. A translation of Dwai Reim from 1582 has gone furtherest in the artificially forced pro-Greek determination of this verse. So here the term Greece has been replaced by the term Greeks. Instead of the king of Greece, here it is written the king of the Greeks. Pro-Greek determinations of this verse from the book of the prophet Daniel are also found in translations in other languages. However, the truth is quite different. The prophet Daniel mentioned this king sometime around the end of the 7th and early 6th century BC, and at that time no Greece existed, either as a state nor as a formation. The unitary Greek state never existed in the ancient times, but instead there were several city-states that were often hostile to one another. This means that the prophet Daniel, who then lived in Babylon, could not mention the king of Greece, because in his day there was no Greece. On the contrary, in the earliest text of the book of Daniel, which was written in the Paleo-Hebrew language, it does not say the king of Greece at all, but it says the king of Yavan. So, who allowed the name Yavan to be forged and replaced with Greece, keeping in mind that in that time such a state did not even exist? Basically, this is an unprecedented falsification made in the Bible itself. We have said that such forgery is already widespread in many Bible translations, but not all. Some Bible translators were correct, so their translation is Yavan instead of the artificially infused and falsified term Greece. Thus, for example, the English translation of the Bible made by Robert Young, published in 1862, clearly states the King of Yavan and not the King of Greece. We have seen that there are also differences among the counterfeiters, which means that they too are not sure of their own forgery, intentional or not. For example, some have translated Yavan as Greece, some as Grecia, and some have even used the ethnonym Greeks. But what does the word Yavan mean? Why has anyone allowed this word to be equated with the term Greece, Greek? Is it perhaps an older name for the territory of today's Greece? We will say immediately that Yavan is not a geographical name, a former name of Greece, etc. But it is a personal name. In particular, it is the name of one of the sons of Japheth, who was the son of Noah. Yavan was the grandson of Noah's son. This is pointed out in the book of Genesis, chapter 10, where we read, 
This is the account of Shem, Ham and Japheth, Noah's sons, who themselves had sons after the flood. The sons of Japheth. Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshech and Tiras. The sons of Gomer. Ashkenaz, Riphith and Tagarma. The sons of Javan. Elisha, Tarshish, the Kittim and the Rodanim. From these. The maritime peoples spread out into their territories by their clans within their nations. Each with its own language. So, according to the Old Testament, various nations came from Noah's grandchildren and their offspring, although it is not precise which person caused which nation. The pro-Greek scholars believe that the Greeks came from Yavan, and that is why the name Yavan was falsified in their translations with the term Greece, although there is no historical evidence for such claim. These translators refer to the Table of Nations, in which the ancient Jewish historian Josephus Flavius wrote that the descendants of Yavan were Greeks. Now, let's take a critical look at such claims. First, let's look at what is the Table of Nations that the pro-Greek translators refer to. We will say immediately that the Table of Nations is not a biblical text but it is a fictional literary creation of some later authors. We have seen that in the book of Genesis in the Old Testament there is no record of which nation was created by which descendant of Noah. Many centuries later certain authors allowed on the basis of this sentence and without any solid evidence to speculate what nation came from which of Noah's descendants. Such assumptions and speculations are known as the Table of Nations. Josephus Flavius is not the only author of Table of Nations. More precisely there is not one but there are several tables of nations created by various authors. Apart from Josephus Flavius, there are also tables of nations whose authors are Saint Hippolytus, 3rd century, Jerome, end of 4th century, Isidore of Seville, 7th century, and other later authors. They all made the tables of nations centuries after the appearance of the original book of Genesis in the Old Testament that supposedly was completed around the 6th or 7th century BC. According to Josephus Flavius's The Table of Nations, written in the 1st century AD, that is, about 7 centuries after the completion of the book of Genesis, Yavan was the ancestor of, and quote, Ionia and all Greeks. Of course, without any historical basis for this assertion. By the way, let's also mention that we have already cited data according to which Josephus Flavius clearly made a distinction between Macedonians and Greeks in his historical works as two separate nations. However, in the Table of Nations created by St. Hippolytus in the first half of the 3rd century, he writes that Yavan, through his son Kittim, was the ancestor of the Macedonians. St. Hippolytus, who came from Rome and is thought to be one of the greatest early Christian theologians, uh, considered the direct descendants of Yavan, beside the Macedonians, to include the Iberians, the Trojans, the Phrygians, and the Romans. That Yavan was the ancestor of the Macedonians, not the Greeks or Greece, is also written in the great Jewish Encyclopedia, published in 12 volumes between 1901 and 1906, where Yavan is clearly identified with Macedonia. It is known that in the ancient rabbinic texts, Alexander the Great was described as Alexander the Macedonian, and that in the Bible, 
Macedonia occurs under the name Kittim, who was one of Yavan's sons. This means that there is a biblical testimony that Macedonia is related to Yavan through his son, Kittim. This testimony is found in the first book of the Maccabees, 1 to 3. After Alexander, After son, son of Philip, Philip. Philip. The, Macedonian, the Macedonian, who came from the land of Kittim, had defeated King Darius of the Persians and the Medes, he succeeded him as king. He had previously become king of Greece. He fought many battles, conquered strongholds, and put to death the kings of the earth. He advanced to the ends of the earth and plundered many nations. When the earth became quiet before him, he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. He gathered a very strong army and ruled over countries, nations, and princes, and they became tributary to him. In this biblical testimony, we can clearly see that Alexander was called Macedonian, who at that time had already conquered Greece and was its master, and that he came from the land of Kittim. And since we know that Alexander's country is Macedonia and that Kittim was Yavan's son, this is biblical proof that Yavan should be related to Macedonia, not Greece. The question arises, why the Bible translators did not use the toponym Macedonia as a synonym for Yavan, although there is biblical testimony for this in the book of Maccabees. Why exactly did they choose the Greek toponym and even the Greek ethnonym when we saw that there was no historical basis for it? Still, it might have been best for these translators to stick to the original text and leave the original name Yavan in their translations rather than improvising on the basis of unproven speculation among which they could rightfully choose Macedonia. This is another unjust pro-Greek tendency of some scholars in which Greece and the Greeks are baselessly attributed to something that does not belong to them, and this time no more, no less, but in the Bible itself. We hope that this injustice will one day be fully corrected. <laughs>